Good morning. Welcome back to Brad Schultz Design, Sewing and Style. And I just wanted to give you a little catch up. Uh, today we're going to be talking about my top 10 notions that I use for sewing, things that I reach for every single sewing project I work on. And they're not the typical things you may always hear about. Honestly, I've been sick for the past week, uh, not COVID related, but um, I've been sick nonetheless. So I've not worked on my Jamila jacket. It's actually here, my Jamila jacket by Sewing Patterns by Mason. Um, I'm still finishing that up. The pattern actually was released yesterday, so you can go and get that. And I will actually leave a link in the description so you can go look at that. It's a great pattern. Um, you know, the jacket styles are all over the place and I already have an idea for another version with some like Sherpa plaid that I have in my stash. So I may be making that up again. Uh, before we start though, look at this. Can you see this? I got this Santa mug at a thrift store and I'm obsessed. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of coffee? Are you a coffee drinker? Um, my favorite coffee itself is from Barney's. It's called Sweetheart Blend. It's almost like a chocolate covered cherry flavor. It's so good. Okay, so let's set this down. Now, these are things I already have that I use for almost every project. Mom, if you're watching, don't buy me these for Christmas. I already have them. You know, speaking of, uh, there is something that I do want you to buy me, Mom. And this is something my mom does for me for Christmas every year. Um, I have a Guterman thread wall display that has a lot of their colors in it. It's one of my best purchases I've ever made in sewing. I love having it. I always have the thread color I need. And then every Christmas, I just send the number of the colors that I need to my mom. And she gets the colors I'm missing and puts them in my stocking. Uh, but now, on to my 10 notions. Starting with number one, if you followed me for long, you know that this is my number one. And it is steam -a -seam. I have them kind of piled up here behind me, but steam a seam. I don't have a new package. I use this all the time. All right, so it's not gonna look like much here, but maybe I'll put a photo of the package here on the screen. Steam a seam is like a modern version of basting. At least that is how I use it. So it's a double-sided fusible tape. The kind I use is a quarter inch. If I open it up here, you'll see one side has the fusible. The other side is just a paper backing. And you lay it down on the fabric, iron it down, peel the paper backing off, and then iron it to the other side, whichever you'd like. It's a, um, a fusible. I use the quarter inch um, Steam a Seam Light 2. Don't really know the difference other than light obviously stands for it being lighter weight. Um, I use it in almost every hem I sew just to hold my hem in place so I don't have to use pins. I use it in putting my pockets in place and holding pockets in place. Anywhere you would use pins to hold something in place, this is a much more secure line of basting. This is my go-to for so many things. I, I shouldn't say I could not sew without this, but boy, does this make the process so much easier for me and much more precise. The next one, I actually don't have. I searched through my stash. I must be out of it, but I use it almost as much as steam -a seam It's called Wonder Tape. The difference between Wonder Tape and steam -a seam is that steam -a seam is actually a fusible um, a permanent fusible where Wonder Tape is just like a double-sided tape and it washes away in the first wash. So I love using Wonder Tape on my knit hems because then uh, it'll hold my hem in place, I can sew it, but then when I wash it, it washes away and I regain the stretch that I need in my hems. So I've really learned to love Wonder Tape. Now I will say I used to hate Wonder Tape because I couldn't get it to stick and hold but I started using it just like steam -a seam where I put it where I want it and iron it down. And I have a blog post actually with these directions. Um, let's see, it's the blog post about sewing pajamas. Uh, and I'll, I'll link that in the description. But I ended up ironing it down and something about the heat just helps the, uh, it's not fusible, helps the tape stick to the layers. 
and then when you wash it, it's gone. So like I said, I use Wonder Tape in my hems. That's really the only place I use it are my knit hems, but I really like the, uh, the use. This next one I have used pretty much ever since I started sewing. When I was teaching sewing classes, I taught sewing classes for years. I bought these for all of my students. This is a magnetic seam guide. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This is just the one I have. It magnetizes to the bed of the sewing machine and you can adjust it based on what your seam allowance is. So you don't have to think, like once you set this at 5 eighths or 3 eighths or a quarter, whatever your seam allowance is, once you set that, you just run the edge of your fabric against this. And honestly, it really kind of drives itself. So it gives you a perfect seam allowance every time. Uh, also, when I'm doing top stitching, uh, I line this up for whatever I want my top stitching to be away from my needle and I just run the edge right along this. It gives me a perfectly straight edge of top stitching, perfect uh, seam allowances every time. I highly recommend this. Um, it's not expensive, but I really think it's very helpful. All right, the next one is kind of newer. I say newer to the market. It's definitely newer to me. I started using it within the last year or so. Uh, but these are friction pins. And if you have not used these yet, you need to use these. I have tried every marking pin and every marking chalk and every marking thing you can think of, and these by far are the best. Um, so if you don't know what friction pins are, they are a gel pin that you can mark on fabric, and then as soon as you apply heat, the markings completely disappear. So it's like a heat-activated ink. <laughs> I'm not a pin maker. I don't know how it works. I just know it does work. So you can mark all over your fabric, and then as soon as you put the iron on it, all your markings are gone. It is amazing. They come in different colors. It'll show up in different fabrics. Obviously, always do a test at first, but I have never had a problem where it doesn't show up on the fabric. Now, they're by Pilot. Uh, there are a lot of kind of off-brands. This is actually an off-brand that I have. I don't even remember where I got it from, but these are the bomb. I mean, what is sewing without scissors, right? We have a love for scissors, paper scissors, fabric scissors, thread snips. I use these duckbill scissors on every project, every seam that I sew. There's something about these, they're very precise, they're small, they feel good in the hand, and this extra edge allows you to separate layers. So they're really good when grading seams. And another little trick about these duckbill scissors is that if you hold them at a slight angle as you're cutting, you can cut the seam in one and it automatically grades it. Other than cutting the patterns and fabrics out initially, these are the only scissors I use going forward. Up next is a twin needle. Now I do not have a cover stitch machine, so I use a twin needle for all of my knit hems. It gives a perfect uh, two line top stitch, perfectly evenly spaced, two line stop, top stitch. It does it at once and you use it on your sewing machine. So what ends up happening is you have two needles at the top of the machine that are going in and out of the fabric and one bobbin thread at the bottom. And the bobbin thread ends up zigging and zagging back and forth between the needles on the underside. So you get two parallel lines of stitching on the top and a zigzag um, on the underneath. And what that allows is for stretch. Now, there are some downsides to twin needles, and a lot of people don't like them because um, they leave a little, sometimes will leave a little bump called trenching. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I'll tell you, using Steam a Seam or the Wonder Tape in your hem edge to hold it in place, it's not a stabilizer, but it does give enough stability there to really kind of keep it from trenching. <laughs> I hope that's the right word. But anyways, look it up. You'll see what I mean. It's much cheaper to buy a needle than it is a cover stitch machine. <laughs> All right, up next. A French curve. I actually have all of my rulers hanging here. I don't think you can see them on camera, but here is, I actually have two French curves. I started with this one uh, years ago, but I'll be honest, I don't actually use this one at all. Uh, this is the one that I use the most. This is the Styling Design Ruler by Dritz. You'll see mine is well loved. It is broken. There was a piece here. The end is broken off. I still use this on almost every single project. Anytime I'm doing pattern alterations and I need to true up any sort of seam lines or um, edge lines, or if I'm changing the armhole, uh, I do a lot of pattern changes in the fit adjustment, so I use this a lot. So the styling design ruler actually combines a typical French curve and a hip curve. Um, 
and it gives you all the curves that you would need in your design. So I use this all the time, uh, necklines, armholes, hip curves, waist curves, really anything that's not a straight line in your sewing patterns, you can find the curve here and it just gives you really nice precise lines. This next product is new to me within the past year. How many of you like me hate pulling elastic through a casing using a safety pin? I did it for years in all of my sewing classes we did it and almost every time the safety pin would come undone and stab my finger. I hated pulling elastic through the drawstring with the safety pin. I've tried so many other things as well, and then I found this guy. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Let's see, this end first. <laughs> I don't know the exact name of this. I'll have to look the name of this up and I'll put it on the screen. I'll definitely, I'll link everything down below in the description so you can go look at them. But here's what I love. First of all, it's just a long plastic piece, but it has these two eyes at the end. And what I do with my elastic is I lay the elastic under, I do a little zigzag back and forth on the elastic and that holds the elastic to this. Or with some elastic, you can either thread it through or with my drawstring pants, I just thread the drawstring through and it's tight enough that it holds it in place. Then it's long enough that I thread this all the way through the waist of the pants and just whoop, pull it through. It is so quick and simple. No, I'm never getting stabbed. It goes through easily. It's nice and smooth. And then I just take it off at the end. This is amazing. All right, so this next notion is something completely extra. <laughs> it is not, uh, it doesn't necessarily help with your sewing, but it helps a little with organizing. So I'm so bad. Like I said, I also do a lot of hand basting and hand sewing. I just like adding that extra little bit of uh, detail to my garments. But I was constantly taking the hand sewing needles and throwing them on with my pins. And let me just tell you, once you throw them on this magnet with the pins, you can't find them again. So I was really struggling trying to find the needles until I bought this. So it looks like a lipstick. And inside, just like a lipstick, you roll it up and it has a little pad there. Let's see, let me move this out of my hand so maybe you can see it. it. Has a little pad here where you can stick your needles on and then it just rolls back down. You put the lid on and all of your sewing needles are here contained. You're not getting stabbed, you're not losing them uh, and you know where they are every time. So I actually got this from Style Maker Fabrics uh, and I will, like I said, I'll link to it. I'm sure you can find different versions of this but I just kind of bought it on a whim and I love it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number 10, thread conditioner. So with hand sewing or even basting sometimes, ooh, you know what? I just thought maybe I'll do this a two part because I just thought of something else that goes right along in this category that I use every time I baste. Be right back. So I have two things to show you. <laughs> so let's just start with what I was talking about, thread conditioner. So this one is called Thread Heaven thread conditioner and protectant. There is nothing worse than trying to base something or hand sew or really hand sew something and make it look invisible than getting a knot in the middle of your thread and having to figure out how to do that or pull your stitching back out. This solves that problem. So a thread conditioner keeps it from tangling. It keeps it from knotting. It helps it glide through the fabric and it just makes the experience so much better with a better finished uh, result. Now I know a lot of people use beeswax, but the thing with beeswax is you have to run your thread through it and then kind of iron off the excess. With this, you don't have to do that. The one that I just went and got because I just remembered for my basting, I bought this uh, years ago now and it's a large spool. So it will last me a long time, but this is actual basting thread. It is made for basting. I can't even really tell you what it is. Um, I know that it's a cotton thread. It's a thicker cotton thread, and I feel like it's coated with something, um, but it doesn't get tangled. And uh, this is what I use for basting. I know I got it from B Black and Sons um, online. This is two ounces. Uh, it's labeled as 40 basting. Um, and then obviously the color is white. So. Those are my top 10, 11, 12. <laughs> I don't remember what number I'm at. I planned on 10, but I, I've added a couple on. But those are my top notions that I use on almost every sewing uh, project. These would make great little gifts. So if you're searching for 
a gift for a sewist in your life, uh, just something small. These are things that they may not already have in their kit that really is going to help their sewing and make the process and the experience so much better, in my opinion. But that's why I'm here, is to give you my opinion. I hope you like it. Um, I'm Brad Schultz with Brad Schultz Design. If you like what you see, uh, then make sure you like and subscribe below. Leave me a comment and let me know what are your top notions. Is there something you think I missed that maybe I should add to mine? Because I love adding new tools uh, to my kit. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.